All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. And this hour, we're going to kick it off in just a moment or two with Daniel Henninger, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and deputy editorial page director of the Wall Street Journal. He's written a great column about Obama unleashing the left. And uh, we'll talk all about that and more. Then the Malzberg panel joins us once again, founder of Less Government, Seton Motley, and host of the Christopher Hahn Show. Guess who? Christopher Hahn. Then Bill Courtney. We had him here a couple of weeks ago, former high school football coach, featured in the Academy Award-winning uh, film Undefeated, author of Against the Grain. He'll be here to talk about uh, his wonderful uh, attempt at motivating young kids, uh, and uh, he's done such a great job of it. All that, give me five and more on this hour of the Steve Malzberg Show. Don't go away. Ready? Yeah. Fire away. Five, Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment. entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. now. Here is Steve Malzberg. is that she condoned torture and uh, consciously told lies about uh, weapons of mass destruction. Really? How do you, how do you know she consciously action. told lies about weapons of mass destruction, sir? How do you know that? What do you mean by that? Where, 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 what do you mean she can't? Give me one lie that she consciously told. First of all, name me one lie. Uh, it has to be conscious to be a lie. What, what did she lie about knowingly, Aluminum sir? Aluminum tubes, which had nothing to do what was with that? What was that? mass destruction. What was that? Aluminum tubes which had nothing to do with <laughs> the possibility of building weapons of mass destruction. Really? Really. All right, there you go. We don't want Condoleezza Rice on our campus to speak at graduation because she lied about aluminum tubes. Uh, all right, folks, uh, as promised, uh, we're joined right now uh, by Daniel Henninger, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and deputy editorial page uh, uh, editor uh, at the Wall Street Journal. Hello, sir. Hi there, Steve. All right, your column is just, uh, it's so brilliant and it's so frightening. I gotta tell you, Obama unleashes the left, how the government created a federal hunting license for the far left, it's so true, and that's just one example of a success story that you do write about in the piece uh, at Rutgers, where they uh, effectively got Condoleezza Rice to say, no, I don't want to pursue this anymore. She was going to be a commencement speaker. Uh, about 250 professors and a handful of students uh, got, uh, got enraged, and they got her to back out. Yeah, the uh, Rutgers uh, <coughs> rolled over. Uh, in that case. But why, you know, there's been a little bit of criticism of Condi Rice saying, well, you should have gone through with it. Why did you pull out? Well, you know, Ray Kelly went up, to, uh, the com former commissioner of police in New York City, went up to Brown University and did appear and basically got shouted off the stage. Why does anybody have to go through that kind of humiliation right. in front of these students? Uh, and it's not right for the, the, the majority of the students who really would love to hear her but aren't going to get to it. Like you said, it'll be disrupted. It'll be, it'll turn into a farce. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there were a couple of other uh, pretty uh, noteworthy examples uh, this year. Uh, Charles Murray, the uh, political scientist writer from the American Enterprise Institute, uh, was uh, his speech at Azusa Pacific was, quote unquote, postponed because they felt the school wasn't ready for him, that some of what he said might be hurtful to some of the students of color and so forth. And uh, Murray then did subsequently write an op-ed uh, in the Wall Street Journal explaining what they would have heard if they had allowed him to speak. And then perhaps most famously, there's the Somali Hersey Ali, writer, yeah. Ayan Hersi Ali, who was uh, disinvited at Brandeis because they said it would conflict with their core values. Uh, basically, what's going on here in, in, is that these conservatives are just being uh, not allowed to uh, express their ideas on college campuses. And uh, what I wrote about was not merely the commencement speeches. No, no, much more. But the fact that it's, uh, it's now pouring over into uh, routine classroom study on these campuses. There was a fascinating article that uh, was in the uh, New Republic recently about the emergence of 
what they call trigger warnings. And this means that professors are now expected to post on their course offerings whether any of the content in the course, readings and so forth, would be disturbing uh, or hurtful to people for reasons of gender, race, ethnicity, uh, sexual uh, orientation and so forth. And indeed, professors have been called out for putting things in their courses without warning students that it might quote unquote traumatize them. Uh, Obviously, all this is coming from uh, the activist left on campuses and conservatives on campus are not doing these things. And it just seems, uh, Steve, to have gotten crazier in the last two years even. You just keep encountering stories like this. And I began to wonder, where the heck is this coming from? And what I've concluded is that it's coming from the fact that uh, the Obama administration has decided to get in, in a big way to enforcing uh, Title IX, and that's the law that was passed some years ago that most of us thought barred discrimination on the basis of sex in college athletics. We all know about that, lacrosse teams, wrestling teams, and the rest of it. But no, Title IX also refers to what they call sexual violence on campus. Now, it's not my purpose here to deny that uh, women do in times get mistreated in college campuses, God knows. But what the, univer what the administration did was they signed an agreement uh, with the University of Montana last May, which the whole university community in the U.S. was watching, because the Justice Department and the Education Department described this long, detailed settlement as, quote, unquote, a blueprint for uh, enforcement of Title IX and sexual violence on campuses everywhere in the United States. I read through that agreement that they signed with them, and I gotta tell you, Steve, it's positively Orwellian. Montana was required to hire what they called an equity consultant. Uh, and there are now things called equity consultants, and that equity consultant was gonna be at the University of Montana for virtually three years monitoring uh, their compliance with Title IX, going over it in enormous, mind-numbing detail. Well, how, how I, I know you wrote about the fact, uh, you, you explained it, but talk about how what, what this does, because it's beyond sports teams, as you alluded to, and you brought up the uh, issue of uh, girls being mistreated. Uh, what are we talking about exactly here? Well, the problem is that uh, the language in the agreement uh, and his description of the, the basis for the enforcement is extremely vague. It's very plastic. It's wide open, which means that it's difficult if a, uh, the left on campus brings a, a complaint in this area. It's difficult to argue against it. It's kind of like you're when guilty did you stop? until proven yeah, innocent. Yeah, when right, did you yeah. stop beating? Yeah. And so forth. And so you're talking about these universities having Title IX federal money at stake, and so their inclination is to bend over backwards to make sure they're in compliance and to do whatever they are asked. And that puts them, uh, it makes them vulnerable to assaults from the campus left in a broad range of areas such as this one, it makes it difficult to argue with them because they've got the Obama Justice Department at their back ready to file an investigation. And indeed, last week, the White House released a uh, list of Department of Education uh, guidelines. Got, no, it was universities. Universities. Quote unquote, under investigation. Really? Not, not okay. cited, under <laughs> investigation. 55 such insane animal houses as Catholic University, Knox College, Carnegie Mellon, Harvard Law School. In an environment like that, it seems to me, Steve, you are simply unleashing the left to do what it wants to do to tell conservatives to get out, shut up, stop talking. And there's no defense against it, as you pointed out. And what we're talking about here, the agreement describes the compliance. Uh, it, it says the term sexual harassment means unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature, but there are also definitions for sexual assault, gender-based harassment. All of this is in the, uh, in the writ call, as you said, guidance. And, and it, it, it vague as, as can be. And, and this opens up, I mean, a Pandora's box where it, it's, if anybody accuses you of almost anything along these lines, how do you defend it? Yeah. And similarly, how does a professor, I mean, this is 
bad enough, but at the sort of day-to-day -day life of the university, uh, when they're asking professors to post trigger warnings and the professor goes, oh, come on, give me a break, this is bunk, uh-uh, you don't do that in an atmosphere like that. You roll over and say, look, I'm sorry if any of my courses or the readings I'm proposing are going to affect anybody for reasons of you know, sexuality or gender or race, I'll take it out. I don't want to offend anyone because I want to keep my job, otherwise those guys will be called up as well. So you've got this kind of atmosphere, Steve, that I think has just allowed the craziest people on campus to kind of run wild. Um, and that's why you keep seeing these stories uh, emerging from the You know, it's, it's worse than ever. I used to think that, you know, once the feminists, you know, were, were, were gone and they were, and, and, and they, you know, and women have succeeded, more women getting degrees than men, girls doing better in school than boys, the whole thing. I, I thought maybe, and, and the, the, the strong feminist movement died down a little, you know, the old Hillary Clintons of the world, so to speak, you know, who made it their point to be feminists on campus. I just thought that was kind of going away a little bit. It's worse than ever. I have a 14-year-old son. I mean, he's a long way. He's four years, God willing, from college or five years. But, I mean, I tell him he can't say what he wants to say or and he has to watch what he says in 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 middle school and next year in high school. He's very opinionated and he's going to get himself in trouble just for expressing himself and you know that's where we are now as a society I mean I don't have to tell you about Sterling I don't have to tell you about others and uh, it, it's it just doesn't stop it gets worse well the process the problem Steve is that uh, as I say it's kind of like uh, uh, the Red Queen and the Alice of Wonderland it's a sentence first verdict afterwards and you're guilty until proven uh, innocent They came up with this thing where high school athletes in New Jersey, if you're in a game, the referee, the umpire, the official has to be on the lookout for anybody who said he, that they think they hear, they think they hear, say something, you know, uh, derogatory of a sexual nature, ethnic nature, whatever, uh, handicap, knocking a handicap, whatever, derogatory. And if they think they hear it, they have to report it. And it could go to the, um, uh, all the way to the state's, um, uh, whatever it is, uh, yeah. bias uh, department. And I asked an official who I had on, so what, what happens then? He says, well, I don't really know. I mean, a kid's name could be dragged through the mud for the rest of his life because a, a referee thinks thinks he heard something. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's right. I mean, you uh, fall down this rabbit hole, and uh, it's very hard to defend yourself against this sort of thing. Uh, it's just kind of like turning due process upside down. Incidentally, uh, you'll be happy to know this, Steve. Uh, Senator Edward Markey of Massachusetts has introduced a bill, I don't think it's going to go too very far, to uh, which would uh, ask the federal government to monitor hate speech on television and radio. <laughs> you can't touch the newspapers, but television and radio. Guess guess who that one's aimed at? Oh, let me see. <laughs> let me let me think. I, I, I'm having trouble coming up with an answer real quickly here. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. You can imagine the definition of hate speech. Well, they so. got it up in they got it up in Canada. They got it in countries all over the place. I mean, it's if the left had its way, it'd be only a matter it'd be happened tomorrow. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I have to say, uh, they'd go crazy to hear this, but w what it reminds me of is what went on in uh, China under Mao Zedong during the Cultural Revolution, which is to say, the primary, uh, one of the primary weapons they used against people was public shaming, and uh, they would be pulled out and, and run through the streets and people would yell at them. How is that different than a conservative appearing on campus and having mobs of students show up and shout at them and scream at them? Uh, that's the kind of, to me, the equivalent of Maoist shaming. Man, that is so out of sync with the American tradition wow. that uh, it just kind of puts us uh, in, a, in a place, I think, where we just don't want to be. But the question is, how? where's the pushback? going to come from. Well, it better come at the ballot box because the American people, if they were polled on this, they <laughs> they don't, they wouldn't, you're right, they don't want this, they wouldn't <laughs> want this for themselves, for their kids, for their future. Uh, but when you have the people in power that we have in power, it, 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 it runs amok. Hey, great, great conversation. I know a lot of it was hate speech. I understand that under Markey's bill, I'm sure. But yeah. uh, we will stay free men, uh, at least for now, Daniel. <laughs> Keep our fingers crossed. Dude. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, great Bye -bye. to talk to you. You too. Uh, Daniel Henninger, ladies and gentlemen. I, 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 Pulitzer Prize winner, as you could tell why, deputy editorial page director 
at the Wall Street Journal. It is lunacy. It is out of control. You can't, and look, you, you wanna send your kid to college? You wanna send your kid to this nonsense? Wow, wow, I don't, I don't. I mean, I'm sure he's going, God willing, but unless he hits the lottery or invents an app, but I don't want him there. Wow, on the Steve Molsberg Show on Newsmax Television. The panel's next.